Welcome to my first strategy video where I'll be detailing how I was able to capitalize on the initial volatility from September's FOMC minutes release and achieve over 90% of the profit goal in my newly created Apex Evaluation account in a matter of seconds. Before I get into it, I want to be clear that this video does not constitute financial advice in any way. This is purely for entertainment purposes only, and I'm just documenting the results of a risky trade idea that made sense in my head. With that said, in my opinion, this strategy should only be used for prop firm evaluation accounts, where your maximum monetary loss risk is capped to the cost of starting the evaluation. This strategy is not recommended for funded prop accounts since there's a risk of losing the account, and I know getting funded takes time and effort in addition to the fees. This strategy should absolutely not be used for your personal futures account, where your monetary loss risk is uncapped. Also, I'll be describing this strategy using S&P futures, since that's the trading instrument I use to test it. This strategy can also apply to other equity futures, but just wanted to clarify that I've only tested it on S&P futures. The main premise behind this strategy is that upon the initial release of FOMC minutes and CPI data, there's an instantaneous massive move in the markets driven by institutional algorithmic trading. These algorithms are set to buy or sell based purely on the objective data released. So for example, if the FOMC rate hike amount comes in at a certain percentage or below, all the algos will buy. If it's above that certain percentage, all the algos will sell. This is what causes the initial spike in futures prices the second the FOMC minutes are released at exactly 1 p.m. Central Time. The same goes for when CPI data is released at exactly 7.30 a.m. Central. The markets will then tend to swing wildly based on how the other details in the news releases are digested. But this strategy just focuses on that initial spike driven by the algorithmic trades. Let's look at some data points about these initial spikes for FOMC minutes and CPI data releases. Here are the one minute charts for the S&P futures during the previous four FOMC minutes releases prior to this month's. We'll be looking at the one minute candlestick at exactly 1 p.m. Central, the exact time the minutes are released. In March, this candlestick had a high of 4307.50 and a low of 4292.50, a range of 15 points. In May, this candlestick had a high of 4197.75 and a low of 4175.25, a range of 22.5 points. In June, this candlestick had a high of 3803.50 and a low of 3767, a range of 36.5 points. In July, this candlestick had a high of 3983.50 and a low of 3973.50, a range of 10 points. Based on these four most recent data points, we can calculate that the average volatility within the first minute of FOMC minutes release is 21 points. Now let's look at the same one minute charts for the previous four CPI data releases. We'll be analyzing the one minute candlestick at exactly 7.30 a.m. Central when the CPI data is released. In June, this candlestick had a high of 4018.75 and a low of 39.72, a range of 46.75 points. In July, this candlestick had a high of 3860.25 and a low of 37.85, a range of 75.25 points. In August, this candlestick had a high of 41.92 and a low of 41.38.50, a range of 53.5 points. In September, this candlestick had a high of 41.75 and a low of 40.70, a range of 105 points. Based on these four most recent data points, we can calculate that the average volatility within the first minute of CPI data release is about 70 points. So now we have data supporting that there's some pretty significant price volatility when the FOMC minutes and CPI data is first released. But how do we know if the initial spike will be up or down? It's impossible to predict, and the beauty of this strategy is that it doesn't matter if it goes up or down. All we need is for that initial price spike to be big enough. Alright, now for the specifics. Here's exactly what I did for the most recent FOMC minutes release on September 21st. I opened two fresh 150k Apex evaluation accounts. With my 50% off coupon code, each one cost me about 160 bucks to open, so I spent a total of $320 to test out the strategy. The 150k evaluation accounts lets you trade a maximum of 17 e-mini S&P futures contracts, and to pass this evaluation, you need to hit a profit goal of $9,000 without hitting a trailing loss threshold of $5,000. I calculated that to hit this $9,000 profit goal using 17 contracts, I would need 10.75 points of profit. The $5,000 trailing loss threshold would equate to around a 6 point stop loss with the max contract size. Then I set up a custom order in NinjaTrader that would automatically set my take profit level at 10.75 points from my entry order. And I didn't even bother setting a stop loss because this is just an all or nothing strategy. Either I instantly pass or fail the evaluation. 
On September 21st, a few minutes before the FOMC minutes release, I set a buy stop order using the maximum 17 contract size at about 5 points above where price was ranging in one of the evaluation accounts. And in the other evaluation account, I set a sell stop order for 17 contracts at about 5 points below where the price was ranging. This way, if price pumped upwards, my buy stop on the first account would trigger and I would scalp out for 10.75 points on the move up. If price dumped downwards, my sell stop on the second account would trigger and I would scalp out for 10.75 points on the move down. Makes sense, right? Of course, I knew this plan wasn't foolproof as there were essentially three different outcomes that were most likely to happen. The first outcome would be that price just spikes hard in one direction and I'd instantly hit the profit target on one account. The other account's stop order just wouldn't get filled, so I'd pass the evaluation on one account and the other one would still be active. The second outcome is that price initially spikes in one direction to trigger one account stop order, but then reverses in the opposite direction even harder. I'd observed that sometimes the first move is actually the fake out before the bigger move in the opposite direction. This reversal would auto liquidate the first account from hitting the trailing liquidation threshold after entering the trade and would trigger the second account's opposite stop order to enter and hit the profit target on the second account. This would result in instantly passing the evaluation on one account and failing the other one, essentially a net loss of 160 bucks, which is the cost of the evaluation account that failed. The third potential outcome is that there's no clear direction when the minutes are released and price just chops around wildly, triggering both account stop orders without hitting any profit targets and both accounts get auto liquidated from the choppiness. This would result in both accounts failing a total net loss of $320. All right, now that the premise and strategy has been discussed, let's see the test results. So here the recording starts about a minute before the FOMC minutes are released and price is dropping around right below 3,900. You can see I have my 17 buy stop orders set at 3,905 on one account and 17 sell stop orders set at 3,893 on the second account. Unfortunately, seconds before the minutes release, Price pumps up just enough to trigger my buy stops and I enter the long position. When the minutes do get released, the immediate reaction was a massive drop. So my account with the buys fell below the liquidation threshold and got closed. But my other account that had the sell stop orders got filled on the entry and almost immediately got filled on the exit from the instant drop. I ended with a total profit of 8,157, which was due to about one point of slippage with my entry orders. Price had dumped so quickly that my 3893 orders had got filled at 3892 and 3891.75. I was actually prepared for some slippage risk, which is why I'd set my stop orders about 5 points away from where price was ranging before the minutes release. But I should have added a point or two to my profit target as well to be safe. Anyway, despite this slippage, I still consider this strategy test to have been a huge success. Outcome number 2, which I had suspected was the most probable, turned out to be what actually happened. I was prepared for one of the accounts to fail since I was betting both sides of a binary event, and the other account, while it didn't hit the profit target completely, was now over 90% there in a matter of seconds. Just a side note, I hit the remaining $900 of profit in the following two days and have passed this 150k evaluation account. Risking a maximum of $320 for a funded 150k Apex account is definitely worth it in my opinion, as the benefit far outweighs the cost. This is why I believe that this strategy should not be tested with funded prop firm accounts or personal accounts because there isn't a targetable profit goal and the risk of losing a funded account or blowing up your personal account is far too high. That said, I will most likely be opening two new evaluation accounts and trying this strategy out again for the next CPI data release on October 13th, but with a few modifications. I ran the numbers for other sized Apex accounts and found out that the best chance of hitting the profit target is actually on the 50k accounts, where you can trade a maximum of 10 contracts and just need to hit $3,000 in profit, which is just 6 points. Not only is this easier to achieve since price doesn't need to spike as much, but the 50k evaluation accounts are also cheaper. They're only $90 each with my 50% off coupon, so I'd only be risking a total of $180 on 2 accounts. So even though I'll only need 6 points of profit, I'll probably set my profit target to be 8 points to account for potential slippage. Keep in mind that some prop firms have a rule on their evaluation accounts where you can't hit your profit goal in a single trade, so this strategy will not work with all prop firms. Thankfully, Apex does not have this rule as of the date of this recording, so this strategy is currently valid for Apex evaluation accounts. Apex does require you to trade a minimum of 10 days though, so after you hit the profit target, you can just take one small micro trade a day to satisfy that requirement. 
My data analysis has shown that the average volatility of the one minute candlestick for CPI data releases is even higher than that of FOMC minutes releases. So I think the probability of this strategy working will be even greater for the CPI data release on October 13th. I'll try to make another video showing the results of testing this strategy again for CPI, so stay tuned. As always, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this detailed strategy breakdown of how I capitalized on the initial price spike upon the FOMC minutes release to almost instantly pass an Apex evaluation account. If any of y'all are looking to open your own Apex evaluation accounts, use my coupon code in the description below for 50% off your first month and 50% off all recurring months. Please also consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribe to help support the channel and be notified of when I upload new videos, which are primarily day trading recaps to document my growth as a prop firm day trader.